As a political newcomer, Lou Burdett says he brings to the table years of experience managing big budgets and a large staff. But he also says his work leading a faith-based nonprofit shows he's committed to improving the lives of Alabamians. I want to be governor of Alabama, Carla, because I have a proven track record of business success. Worked 13 years at Books A Million. Know how to manage people. Know how to manage a large business. A large budget, we grew that chain from 250 employees to over 3,000. Since leaving Books A Million, Burdett has been president of King's Home in Shelby County, which cares for women and children leaving domestic violence situations or dealing with homelessness. Taking that to King's Home and how much fun that has been to see God transform lives and such a unique perspective too, working with moms and kids coming from devastating circumstances of abuse, uh, homelessness, poverty, um, and having a chance to find hope and, and truly a way to start over in life. And that's what I want to take for all Alabamians. I want all Alabamians to have that came, same kind of opportunity for success. He says working with so many families has given him a unique perspective on improving education. Education has got to be the number one priority of every governor, every legislature, every session until we get it right. And we've never gotten it right in my lifetime. Another reason that I'm running for governor, we've been at the bottom of the list in education, health care, crimes and prisons, mental health issues skyrocketing. In education, we've got to focus on until we get it right. He supports more dual enrollment programs, allowing high school students to take college level classes, incentives to attract and retain the best teachers, and he says school choice may benefit Alabamians in larger cities. He proposes something like a Teach Alabama plan, similar to national programs, paying teachers more to work in underserved communities, an approach he says could also help struggling rural hospitals. Same for attracting doctors to rural areas. If one doctor will relocate to a small community, a small town like where I grew up in East Alabama, um, it's a $1.7 million impact on that community. Positive impact with, um, with what that doctor creating that office, renting space, having a staff, supporting pharmacies. It's what an impact that is. And so we need to be attracting young doctors uh, to go to rural communities. Raised in Roanoke in eastern Alabama, Burdett has a very personal take on the state's embattled prison system. At the age of 15, I was kidnapped, shot and stabbed and thrown in a well to die. And the good part of that story is, is the two guys that kidnapped me, they, they uh, were tried, they received their sentence, they served their time, and then when they got out of prison, they were never in trouble again. And isn't that what we want for all inmates? And so I want to work with our prison system and our inmates to get them on that path to success so that they don't return to prison. He supports building new prisons to ease overcrowding and despite being a gunshot victim, says he's a staunch supporter of Second Amendment rights. Gaming laws died in the state legislature again during the last session. Burdett says if Alabamians ever get a chance to vote on a lottery or casino gambling, any bill has to spell out exactly how the money would be spent. I think Alabamians, if they had a simple lottery bill, standalone lottery bills, completely separate from casino gambling, I, I believe that Alabamians would pass uh, a bill like that, that was a simple lottery bill, but we have to have it with a strict use of how it would be spent. When asked about record inflation and high gas prices, he criticized the state's gas tax. And it starts with uh, capping the gas tax and repealing the gas tax because I think with less government we can pay for new roads and bridges and we also Carla have a one over a one billion dollar sur surplus in the in the last year uh, fiscal year and a surplus before that why don't we use some of that surplus money to pave roads and bridges and not put a gas tax on the backs of Alabamians four or $500 out of their pocket a year. Voters go to the polls for the primary election, May 24th. Carla Wade, 
WVTM 13.